my beauties. So I have a couple videos to film tonight. I have a consignment haul, a huge consignment haul. I have Birchbox versus Ipsy, but I also have Foster Care Friday, which um, I'm kind of excited to talk about because I've had a lot of questions and interest in this. And this week I want to talk all about visitation. So um, I want to talk about what is in my visitation bag, but also just real quick what my experience with visitation has been. Now there are lots of different types of visitation. Basically the idea is that, you know, the goal with foster care is to reunite the child with um, their family. So those visits are trying to keep that bond, that connection between the child and their family tight and consistent. So visitation is extremely important. And I know some people look at it as kind of like a hindrance. It's, you know, it's one more thing on the schedule and the schedule is already busy, but this is very very important that even just looking at it from your child's perspective that the the child in foster care is able to have that time with their family so also there are lots of different types of visitation but the ones that I have experience with are uh, supervised by DHS supervised by a caseworker so either they are transported by a caseworker or by a transporter someone that's licensed um, or I take them to the DHS center and they spend their time with the family member and then I take them home or they're driven home to me. Most of the time I try to drop them off and pick them up. Um, that way I can make sure that the family member is there and I can tell them anything, you know, catch them up on up to date with whatever's going on with the child or what they need specifically that day. And um, I don't know, it also lets them see my face and so that I'm not this kind of elusive foster mom back here that I'm an actual person that um, they can kind of connect with me as well. So I found that to be beneficial in my limited experience and um, this is what I'm doing in these videos. I'm not claiming to be an expert, I'm just sharing with you what my experience so far is. So I wanted to show you what is in our visitation bag and I think this is good for any baby. So one thing to keep in mind, let's just say mom and dad are the ones that you're doing business with just to kind of keep it easy. Um, mom and dad do not know much about you as foster mom. The caseworker tends to keep your privacy pretty protected. And so really the only thing they know about you is what they see, either what, you know, how their child is when they come to visits or what's in the bag. So I see the bag as kind of a reflection of you um, and of how well you're taking care of their child. Maybe I'm reading too far into it, maybe these are just very subtle clues um, that the parent might not even be aware that they're picking up on, but I think it's worth mentioning. So the bag that I chose, it's a Medela bag, it's black, it's very gender neutral, nondescript, but it is a clean bag. It's, it's a bag that is very easy to clean. It's not super fussy, it's not cheap looking, it's just very basic. <laughs> It's a basic bag. Um, and inside it, again, this is for a 11 month old little boy. So what is in your bag might be different, but let's take a look. This is kind of his diaper bag. So first and foremost, I have a kind of a lovey. Now his lovey, he's actually sleeping with right now. So this is a substitute lovey, but he actually does really like this um, dinosaur a lot. It's very good to chew on his face. So I always make sure his lovey, his comfort item is in here just because um, visits, you never know kind of what emotions they're gonna bring up. So I think it's very good to have a comfort item packed in here. Also there's, I usually have a blanket in here, but he's sleeping with a blanket as well. It's a little kind of stroller size blanket. Um, so comfort item and a blanket. And the blanket is so if they if the child wants to take a nap or if they just kind of want to cuddle, I think a blanket is like nice. I want to wrap them up. One thing I try to keep in mind when I pack the bag is let's say this is the only visit that the parent gets this week. In our case, they get one visit a week, one hour. And if it was my child, what would I want to do? If I only got to spend one hour a week with them, I would want to give them a bottle, feed them a meal, change their diaper, like do those mom parenting things. So I try to give them the opportunity to do that if they would like. So, for instance, I always have a bottle. I have it pre-filled with water, six ounces usually, so that they know um, how much formula is in here. And I have the formula pre-portioned in just this little container. So I always have a bottle and formula, and I always make sure I include the cap just in case the baby doesn't finish the bottle. Sometimes giving the bottle is kind of more for the parent than for the baby. <laughs> you know, like they just kind of want that act of feeding the bottle, and I don't blame them. They're totally cool with that. So there you go. Always have the stuff to do a bottle um, and include a toy. Right now he's really big. He loves this teeter and it like rattle. This is a really big thing for him. 
and an added bonus is that this was brought um, by one of his family members. So I think they like seeing this, that I recognize that this is an important item and it stays with him and he uses it a lot and it also goes in his visitation bag. So that is in there. Now, in case they want to feed a meal, I'm totally cool with. It's usually during breakfast hours. Um, so I have a jar of baby food. Obviously, it's unopened. <laughs> Um, and then I have some oatmeal if they would like to thicken it. I have a spoon and I put this all in a Ziploc bag so that if the spoon is like dirty or whatever, they can just throw it all back in here and it's totally fine. Um, and then I have a bowl for them to mix the food and the oatmeal. And then it has a lid just again, just in case the baby doesn't finish all the food. So that's for a meal. Um, baby John, that's what we call him, has been working a lot on, you know, like self-feeding and um, he loves snack time and, I don't know, just eating food off a tray. So I included some goldfish, again, with a lid, um, really easy to eat out of. So there you go. So, so far, lots of, e <laughs> lots of eating, right? A bottle, baby food, solid food. We got all the bases covered depending on um, what they want to do. I want to make it very flexible and open-ended and so their visitation can kind of be what they want it to be. And then a bib, of course. I also include a change of outfit just in case mealtime gets a little messy or they want to change his outfit. I'm totally cool with that. I don't care. So clean shirt, clean pair of pants. Sometimes I have a pair of socks or shoes or whatever it just depends on the day and this always changes based on kind of like the weather or everything so I just threw kind of a nondescript shirt and pants for this video but um usually when I'm packing the visitation bag that day I put something kind of fun in here and then we've got just a basic swaddle blanket just in case um in case they want to change a diaper and they need like a place to lay them down whatever I don't care just a little swaddle blanket all the way down at the bottom of the bag then, if they want to change the diaper, which I always encourage, <laughs> um, two diapers, disposable, just so it's ease. A lot of people are very comfortable with disposable diapers. So we cloth diaper about 75% mm, of the time, I would say, at home. Um, but we also disposable, you know, for naps and overnights. So he's familiar with disposables and it works for us. So two disposables and some wipes. And then I think that's about it. And then the last thing, um, which I do not have in here because I'm trying to kind of keep it private, is um, I have a little journal where I write down like milestones. Like right now he is walking all over the place. This week his language has exploded. Um, if we go do things as a family, like we go apple picking or we go to the pumpkin patch, I print pictures and put them in that book so that they can you know, they can take them home, they can have pictures of their child. Um, and so it's kind of like a back and forth. And if they ever want to ask me any questions or make any requests or anything like that, they can do that in the book. And that way it doesn't get lost in the kind of the telephone between caseworker and who or whoever supervising visitation and then me. It's just back and forth real easy. So that is it. That is what is in our visitation bag. I also had a question of, um, do you stay? Do you leave? You know, like when you drop off for visitation. Usually when I drop off, I do not leave until I know that the person that is having that visit today is there. Um, I never, I would just feel horrible if I dropped a child off and then the person never came. And um, I think that would just be awful. So um, I do always make sure that the person is there before I leave. And then since it's just like an hour or maybe two hours if it's back to back visits, um, I usually just run errands. And so I'm in the neighborhood, I have my cell phone, I'm really close by. And then when the time is up, I swing in by and pick them up and take them home. So um, I, I guess that answers your question. I don't, I don't leave until I know that the visit is going to take place, um, just in case there's a no show. And I think that was all the questions about visitation. Um, Oh, I did have some questions about like, people wanted to know specifics of our case of like who he's having visitations with and stuff. And just for privacy, um, I don't want to disclose that, but I totally understand why you want to know. I totally get it because um, I have had friends and stuff that have gone through, been foster parents before, and I've kind of wanted to know like, what is going on with this case? And so I get the curiosity. Um, but I mean, this is a really open forum and it's not my place to say, and it's his it's his story. So um, I'm not going to talk about who his visits are with or anything like that, any specifics. But anyways, I wanted to show what I pack in the visitation bag because people kind of want to know like what's in his diaper bag. It is very similar to just kind of like your everyday diaper bag, but um, 
you know, there's kind of a reason behind everything. And it's really, I just want to, them to have an opportunity to showcase their parenting skills and, um, you know, to have that opportunity to parent and to love and to, you know, take care of this child in the limited time that they have each week. So there you have it. If you have any questions about fostering or um, visitations or anything like that in general, feel free to leave a comment down below. Or if it's a private, you know, if you have a kind of like a private question, feel free to um, find me over on Facebook or send me an email or send me a message through YouTube and I will try to answer it. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. So let's say you're looking at it from like a month a money-making standpoint, which is gross, but let's just get it out of the way. Let's just test this theory that you want to make money being a foster parent. Did you guys used to babysit as, like, teenagers? I did. So imagine someone comes up to you, you know them, maybe they go to your church or something, and they go, hey Carla, I know you like to babysit, so here's kind of a job I was hoping that you could help me out with. I know a lady, she's going, she's going on vacation, she can't take her kids with her. So she was hoping that she could drop her kids off at your house this afternoon and you could just take care of them, I don't know, indefinitely. 